Hello, ballers, and welcome to week nine of the season. It's flying by. Um, I just, it's crazy. We're already nine weeks in. It feels like we just started this thing. But without further ado, let's get into last week. So, the highest scoring team last week was the Arlington Taxpayers with a score of 457.3. Uh, he took down uh, Team K Wolfie, who was the lowest scoring team last week. He scored 255 points, um, and he took a really big loss last week. Um, might be the widest margin we've had all year, um, and the Arlington Taxpayers absolutely kicked ass. So, great job, Marsh. And uh, so let's talk a little bit more about some of these other matchups um, we had seen last week. <clears throat> so we saw myself losing uh, to Watts Gucci and uh, the Shiaty Game Picker. Um, he beat me 364 to 332. Um, he had... He, he didn't have necessarily his best week, but he put together a solid week. Um, and then I kind of fell short of, well, I actually had a good week. I scored three thirties and I was the highest points for a loser last week, but, um, just a tough loss for me and another good win for Watts. Uh, then we saw Daniel take down Parker Lutz and Sleepy Jaw. Just absolutely, the league is kicking the shit out of these one in seven teams like myself. Uh, I can't buy a win. I've had back to back good weeks and should really probably, you know, really since the first couple weeks, I've turned it around and have been um, a lot, a lot better. But like I said, Daniel last week took down Sleepy Jaw 320 to 300. And uh, so I, I want to say that. Well, yeah, I also want to point out Parker Lutz for not setting a lineup. Come on, dude. you got to set a lineup. That's that's part of the, the reason you're in the league is to play. So, uh, throwing some shouts to him. You need to set a lineup. Uh, then we saw the Louisville Lumberjacks lose to the Flagrant Fowlers. Um, Lumberjacks just kind of underperformed last week. I kind of figured this would be a very close matchup. And the Flagrant Fowlers got it done. They moved to 6-2 and two and uh, are up at the top of the league. Uh, then we saw Clayton. I already said that one. Uh, and then Clarence falls to Scuff Jordans in Austin. Austin with another high-scoring week. Um, he's hitting 377. And uh, Clarence just can't get over that hump. Um, he can't put together that good week, mainly because his guys are hurt right now. Um, I want to give a big shout out to Sleepy Jaw, even though he only scored 300 and 300 points exactly, pretty much. Uh, he was the most efficient with a 95.8%, but I also got to say he didn't play two players, so I guess that kind of helps your efficiency when you don't have to pick. Um, but either way, still good job. Uh, the standings, uh, we still see the Arlington Taxpayers on top there, number one. Uh, they are on a four-game, four-week winning streak, and they they have looked good. Um, and then we have number two, we have Watts Gucci. Number three, we have Freaking the Sheets with Daniel. Number four, we have Flagrant Fowlers. Five, Clayton Wolf separates himself from the top of the pack. He moves to five and three after that loss this week. Scuff Jordans is on a two-week winning streak. They're back up to four and four, and the Louisville Lumberjacks fall last week um, to four and four, and they are at 500. And then, rounding out your standings are the bottom three teams with Sleepy Jaw, Clarence Falls, and myself. On to this week. Um, <clears throat> we're seeing myself take take on Parker Lutz. Um, 
I'm hoping this week that I can finally get back in the win column. It's been a few weeks since I've won, uh, and this would be a good win for me. I would like to, I would like to climb back in, but I think I'm a little far out. Daniel is going on, going up against the Louisville Lumberjacks. Daniel is projected right now to beat Murph by 40, 38 points, 38 points. So Murph's going to have to figure out a way to make up some points. Maybe look at the waiver wire, see what's out there. Um, but it should be a pretty good matchup as the week goes on. And then we are seeing the two top teams in the league going at it. This is a big one this week for these boys. We got the Arlington Taxpayers going up against Watts and the Shiety Game Pickers. Um, this right now is a 52-48 split and it's within 10 points of projection before the week starts. So this one should be good down the stretch. And I am looking forward to the banter that will be said between them as the week goes on. And then Michael is taking on Clarence Falls. Um, Michael is on a two-week win streak, and he is um, looking looking to move to seven and two. Probably going to do it against Clarence. Um, and then we also have another. I think this is an underrated matchup. We have our um, Clayton Wolf, who has kind of been on a losing skid, going up against Scuff Jordans. Uh, right now, Clayton is down to him by 39 points. He's gonna have to make up some ground before the end of the week, but uh, like I said, this this team with uh, Scuff Jordans is hot right now, and uh, they look like they could go on a run and join the top of the pack soon. So Clayton, you better figure something out, just like Murph, find something on the waiver wire, figure out a little edge, and see if you can take advantage of it. And then finally, we have this week's um, matchup, or the matchup of the week, yeah. And that's definitely going to um, Watts and Marsh. I'm looking forward to watching how that one plays out as the week goes on. So, now it's time to get into power rankings. At number 10, I am putting Clarence Falls at number 10. Um, still has just not been able to get it going. At number nine, I am putting myself. Uh, just a tough, tough season for me so far. Started out really bad, and I've put together a decent team now, just not getting the wins that I would like. Uh, number eight, I'm putting Sleepy Jaw. Um, not much to say about his team right now, uh, but it's this bottom three of the league. Everybody just seems to want to beat up on us. So at number seven, oh man. I'm putting, hmm. This is going to be odd and I hate doing this. But I think this team of Clayton Wolf, so I'm kind of putting him on blast here, is overrated. I said it early in the year. I think that this team is overrated, and I'm putting him at number seven. He falls from four to seven this week. Um, he just has not been putting up consistent good weeks. He's kind of gotten lucky. Um, I believe he's won a couple matchups by, like, less than a point and uh, has not been uh, – has not really been – that impressive since he's lost and he isn't showing any signs of really upgrading his team he's a guy I think that could use some help as we approach this trade deadline coming up and uh, he, he if he looks to buy he will find himself back up there with the top teams but right now his team just doesn't impress me on paper and it didn't at the beginning of the year and it's kind of playing out and I'm putting him at number seven at number six I'm putting the Louisville Lumberjacks um, they dropped one last week, but this team is going to play spoiler and may end up finding themselves in the playoffs down the stretch. Uh, really like his squad. Um, <clears throat> really, he just needs to have, I mean, it's so tough to predict when Steph Curry is going to go off. But um, if he can hit that every other week, then he's going to get a win because Steph Curry is just, 
he's been dropping some big games, and uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping Murph can predict those a little better and see his team really rise up the ranks. At number five, I'm putting Scuff Jordans, just the biggest wild card in the league. Um, him and Murph are just kind of the spoilers in my opinion, um, but this squad is still on paper just kind of odd to me, but I got to give him credit where credit's due. He is currently sitting at 500 and uh, down the stretch, um, we'll see what his team's made of. He may be a team that's looking to make a move here as we approach a trade deadline. At number four, I am putting, oh man, this is so close. Ah, uh, man. <laughs> I am putting the flagrant Fowlers at number four. I know Michael wants to run his mouth and say that he should be a top three team. And in truth, he probably is. He's probably right up there with Daniel. Daniel has just been so hot right now. He is on a five-week win streak that I cannot take him out of the top three. So, with that being said, Daniel, you are number three this week. Um, just continuing to kick ass. Uh, and he has built a very solid squad. He, man, Daniel, Daniel may be joining the wagon conversation um, very soon if he doesn't get beat. Um, he he is built a squad that I think can compete with with the Arlington Taxpayers and Watts Gucci. So that's put kind of the rest of the league on blast with saying you better figure it out or else you're going to get beat by these teams. Um, and that being said, I think it's appropriate to put Watts at number two. He can't, he bounced back after after a loss the week before, um, and. He, uh, you know, he's kind of got some young studs on his team. I mean, Zion has lived up to the, the draft position. Uh, shot Shea, Gildress, Alexander, um, he's lived up to the draft position. He has hit on multiple levels this year, and uh, that's why he is earning the spot at number two, and his team has been playing very well lately. At number one, we have the Arlington Taxpayers. They have Rose back up to the top, and they are taking the number one position going into week nine for Rex's Power Rankings. That being said, I am looking forward to seeing you all chatted up in the Discord. Um, I'm glad that we've been very engaged, actually. Um, but continue to set a lineup, continue to care, and uh, this will be fun as we approach the playoffs. Um, here in a few weeks. So that being said, I will see you next week.